Welcome to March's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is reconstruct original digits from English. Given a non-empty string containing out-of-order English representations of digits 0 through 9, output the digits in ascending order. For example, if we're given this string here, uh, 0, 1, 2 all exist inside of this. We can rearrange it to form that, and we want to return an output of a string, but the representations of the 0, 1, 2. Um, all right, so we kind of know that we're going to have to use a counter object to do this. And here's kind of my first attempt. Initially, what I thought we'd have to do is iterate down all the numbers that we have, starting with 0, 1, 2, uh, in order, and just count up all the numbers inside of our string. And if all of them exist, we could subtract it from the counter object and append it out. Uh, but this actually isn't going to work. And the reason for that is uh, it's totally possible that we could have numbers where, like, for instance, 1, 0, and e exist inside of our string, but they're actually technically from other, you know, numbers like 7 and 2 and stuff like that. Uh, so if we want to account for every single character in here, we have to make sure that at the very end we've counted up every single one. And that's going to require us to do something recursive and do like backtracking. So as soon as I realized that, I, I gave up this approach because I, I knew that was not optimal. So um, let's stand on the shoulders of giants and go to the the discussion boards to kind of help us out here. All right, so the big insight actually here is this. Uh, let's look at our even digits. Now we can see that for the even digits, there's a single character that only exists inside of that number. With zero, Z only appears in zero, W only appears in two, and so on and so forth. So that would make it a lot easier. Like if we just count up the number of Ws, we already know that's the number of twos in here. But the question is, what do we do with these other ones, the odd, that can like have multiples? So like with 1, 0 appears in 1, but it also appears in 0, 2, 4, right? But remember that we already have a unique character for 0, 2, and 4. So what we can do is say, okay, count up the number of zeros, but subtract the number of times 0, 2, and 4 appears. So as long as we cascade in order, then we can get the number of zeros or ones here pretty easily. Same with h. Um, with 3, we just need to find how many h's there are and subtract the number of 8's that we've already counted before. And that's going to be the number of 3's. Okay, so hopefully that makes uh, decent sense. I'm going to have to like go back and forth here to get this correct. So let's start off by first creating our counter object. And that's just going to be a counter of string. And now I'm going to have an array with uh, just 0 times 10 here. And each one of these indexes is going to represent the number of zeros through nines. OK, so now this is the hard part. We have to uh, figure out all the number of um, digits that we have. And we can do that by looking at, remember, like for instance, 0 is just going to be the number of z inside of here, right? So we can already take care of zeros pretty easily. So let's take care of all the even ones, because that's pretty self-explanatory. 2, 4, 8. So 2 is what? W. 4 is U. And 8 is, um, oh shoot, what was it? Oh, I forgot 6. 8 is G, and 6 is X. Okay, now let's look for the ones that overlap. So n of 1, uh, that's going to be number of o's, right, subtracted by all the other ones that also have o's. So that includes 0, 2, 4, 0, 2, and 4. So that's 0, oops, 2, and 4. Now let's take care of the other ones. So we need to take care of 3, 5, 7, and 9. So it's all going to be kind of similar to this. OK, 3 is going to be, uh, sorry, let me go back. 3 is h minus 8, so h minus 
and of eight. Five is, uh, was it F? Yeah, F minus four. Seven is S minus six. And finally, nine is going to be um, I minus five, six, eight. I minus five, six, eight. Five, six, and eight. Okay, so now in our array with n, that should contain the number of every single digits that we have. So now we just need to figure out how to return it as a, um, as a string. So what I'm going to do is say for i in range of 10, uh, we'll just, well, I guess we'll create a list. And we'll say output to this list, the ni will convert it to a string. And we'll multiply it by however many times it appears inside of ni. So that would just be n of i. So my mistake, it shouldn't be that. It should be a string of i times the number of times it appears. So finally, we just want to return a string join of our output. It's already in order. So let's see if this works. Ooh, OK. Um, It's just a syntax error. <sighs> All right, so it looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit it. Okay, what did I do wrong? Um, so two, four. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm like messing up everywhere here. Let's get one more time. All right, there you go. Accepted. So time complexity wise, because we've been able to figure out like um, a distinct representation of all these numbers, it's actually O of n. Uh, we do use O of n extra space because of this list, but I would say this is definitely optimal. Now this question works because we kind of lucked out in that we were able to figure out like this cascading way to get distinct numbers, or I'm sorry, distinct representations by a single character. But it's not always going to be possible to do this for other um, instances, like if we had a list of letters that we want to use, like animals, maybe. Um, I don't know if that would work. So uh, if that was the case, if we didn't have this option, we might have to just do that recursive backtracking with the counter uh, function. And that would still work, but it would just be very slow. Okay, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.